actually was born in Galway City between Bohemore and Air Square. It's called Prospect Hill. And uh, yeah, right in the middle, smack in the middle of Galway City where all the action was going down, so to speak. What was life like for you growing up as a young man? Oh, we had a great time. I have to say we were very fortunate. We had, uh, we had, I suppose, if you call it a normal upbringing, we had a mammy and a daddy, they were both alive. Daddy worked, mammy was the homemaker. And uh, there was four of us all together. We had, we have one brother, he's in heaven. But um, she literally, her role in life was to be a mother. She literally excelled at that. I don't think any of us will ever be as good as she was. We were very fortunate, it was very simple. No more than as Sparky said, it wasn't as if we were overindulged in any shape or form, we weren't. But we got what we needed always. She was always there for us, like we walked into the house and poor dad, if she wasn't there, we said, where's ma'am? Hi dad, where's ma'am? She was the focal point. She was. The, she was the homemaker. Education was big for her, particularly for both of them, I would imagine. And uh, we were all sent to the same school. We went to the school in the Mercy Primary and the Mercy Secondary. The whole four of us, yeah. So we just had a normal life, really. How, how has Galway changed from when you were young? Again, I can relate to what Sparky said. We had the simplest of fun. We went down to the square. We rolled up and down the hills. We ate our sandwiches, we drank my wadi. We left at 10 o'clock in the morning. We only came home when we were hungry. That is the truth. We came home when we were hungry. She never worried about us, there was no phones. We literally came home when we were hungry. We played one, two, three red light. We played just, you never went home without your friends either. You always made sure that if I was with, you came home together. But now I just think, unfortunately, I think it's just, and I think Sparky said the same thing. For, it's a different Galway from my own child growing up at 19. Like, I worry about her at night time now. People worry about me, they say, oh, make sure you're okay. But you can't live your life like that either. You know, oh, wondering what's around every corner. So, um, we just, I'm lucky, I, I suppose, I don't appreciate how lucky I was, really, or am. You know, um, we were brought up to be yourself. And I was also remember when we were in the RTC, the one bit of advice I got, and it always stayed to me, we were doing interviewing techniques, and two lines. Don't ever think you're any worse or any better than anybody else, or don't do to anybody else what you wouldn't want done to yourself either. And I think if I can carry that with me, that's it, really, yeah. I, I worked in uh, Moons, uh, BT as it is now, when I came back from the States and then I went from there then to work in, in a solicitor's office briefly and then I went working in the office that I was in for 32 years and that was just as a receptionist in an accountant's office, not an accountant might I add, because I failed maths in my leave insert. <laughs> what would be your passion or hobby? I love you start laughing now because I suppose I love theatrics and drama. I loved the Druid Theatre. That was my favourite pastime. And I can be honest, no more than as, as this gentleman said here, the crack in the pubs, the sing songs, everybody was themselves. They were just, they were just out to have a good time. Now, unfortunately, um, I don't know. I think the crack has gone out of the pubs, really. And as well as that, They'll kill me now for saying this, but drink has got so dear, I don't know. No wonder people are buying cans in, in, in off licences. Because you go into a pub and you drop 50 euros at the drop of a hat. It's a lot of money, you know. Can you remember the last time when you were really happy? Oh, I think, um, again, it's when my I was 36 when I had my one and only. And um, I don't think I appreciate or I hope, and this is a huge statement for me to make, hope I don't take it for granted the fact she's healthy. I think I do. You know, when you have, and you look down at a child and they have 10 fingers and 10 toes and the same applies, and you find out later on that bless them. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing for me that I, I think I take for granted sometimes that I was blessed with a healthy child. Healthy. I don't say normal here now, because what's normal nowadays, you know? Yeah, exactly. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, can you remember the, 
your most fondest memory if you were to try and pull it from your brain right Oh, now? straight away, Christmas morning, sitting on the bed with a box of Maltesers. I can still see that red box of Maltesers and the four of us were upstairs. Mammy was downstairs, Daddy was gone for a drink with his friend and the four of us are up on the beds and this big box with just Maltesers and we just happy out. Mm. Um, it was a real big box of Maltesers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a real big box. Maltesers, yeah. Do you have any regrets in life? Oh God, I can answer that straight away because the minute you said that it was going to be profound. Um, unfortunately, um, I have made uh, attempts on my life. And luckily enough, I obviously was meant to stay in this world for a little while longer. Um, I'm very fortunate. I suppose I have regrets in that. What I put my family through in the sense, you know, when your family turn around and say, they're happy you're in the high dependency unit as opposed to literally being in the unit as in concrete walls, as in from here to here, because they know you're safe. That's scary days, that's scary days. But they, that was, that was literally emphatic of how they worried about me really and how, you know, they knew, I suppose for my mother particularly, she never, ever, ever came to see me. She could never understand why the poor lady, she couldn't. My family tried, they came back. Nobody knows why it happened, I don't know. I don't know and I never will know, but that's one thing I have to let go. Do I regret losing those years? I was a normal Maria, normal working wife, mother, and all of a sudden the rug was pulled clean cut out from under me, clean cut. I don't know why, but it was meant to happen. I did have a car crash and I made one prolific statement and I think that frightened them, and I'm going to leave it at that, when I said, I wish I died in that car crash. And I can still see my three sisters look and say, what? And I didn't take it back either. So maybe there was a little bit of a warning sign there that the tumbling blocks were starting to tumble down. It was going too fast. And uh, I suppose now I'm so grateful to be alive. And I suppose I owe it to my family, really. And I don't respect that. I don't show them that respect, I suppose, often enough. And I don't say it to them either, you know? If you could give your younger self one bit of advice, um, what, what would that be? Do you know, I wouldn't change it. I don't regret marrying. I don't, to say that I regret having Kate, God, Jesus, no, she was the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, there's a sign, if I had my life to live over, I'd do it all over again. I wouldn't change a solid thing. We were truly blessed with Put it like this, I was very happy with our lot. And that's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah.